Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, I've come up with this term that, that I call photo viz to, to describe this world that um, we're entering, where we're swamped with photographs and trying to figure out what to do with them. Um, and also for, for looking at the way that data visualization and photography can live together. This is one of my favorite photos. It's um, about nine months of uh, the sun moving across the sky. Um, so you can see in this embedded, you know, the cloudy days and um, the partially cloudy days by these little spotty tracks. Um, oh, we don't have the slide yet. There we go. Um, uh, these little spotty tracks um, that indicate where the sun was visible on those days. Um, so as Christine said, um, I've been doing this project called the Feltron Annual Report for uh, the last 10 years. And this is a project in which I look at my personal data and do um, charts and graphs and statistics to try and aggregate the story of a year into a single document. Um, I've also made different products that try to help other people work with data and um, use it as a communication tool or an expression, uh, tool of expression. So things like Datum and uh, Facebook's Timeline and re the Reporter app. But I've also done things like make wine labels out of data. And, and for me, data has become this creative material um, that sits alongside text and image. And I feel like uh, as designers, this is something that, that everyone should embrace. I, I think of it you know, uh, as a new wood, um, rather than thinking of it as an oil, as something to be exploited. It's something that we can make um, beautiful objects from. Um, so big data is a term that gets tossed around a lot. Um, this is the era that we live in. And it's, it tends to be characterized by three things, uh, volume, variety, and velocity. Um, but you can also think of photography in that way today. Um, we've got an incredible volume of photos, um, incredible variety, and an incredible velocity. So you know things like this selfie of Barack Obama um, are just expected today, whereas you know, 10, 15 years ago, these kind of intimate moments were not being captured or communicated. So when I think about this volume component, um, I can look to my own camera roll. Um, Christine mentioned she had 1,600 photos on her iPhone. I have about 19,000. And they've been on this incredible trajectory. Maybe it's plateaued now. Um, but I'm around like four or 5,000 photos that are being taken each year. Um, and I don't really know what to do with them. I'm either sharing them or they're just in an archive that I rarely come back to. Um, I think variety um, is just prolifer proliferating at an incredible rate. So, um, you know, probably everyone in this room has at least one camera, maybe two, maybe three, when we think about all the different objects that now have them. Um, so our phones, our tablets, dedicated cameras, um, many houses have things like uh, drop cam um, by Nest in them. Our cars are starting to be surrounded by cameras to understand their environment, um, wearables, drones, and, um, and you know, when we go out on the streets, we're probably being photographed as well. So how do you, how do you start to deal with this incredible variety of, of cameras in our environments? And then velocity is not just increasing um, in terms of us taking more pictures because storage is free and cameras are cheap, but also new devices that are being developed, like uh, wearable cameras. Um, this is uh, just a look at a clip on camera called the narrative. And the idea here is that it takes a photo every 30 seconds while you're wearing it. So if you look at these different time periods, you know, you can get up to 60,000 photos just in a month of wearing this. And when we look at the history of photography, um, thinking about Henri Cartier-Bresson and his idea of the, the decisive moment, um, he's kind of the father of photojournalism. Um, this is idea that you know you should take this one photo that captures um, the essence of what you're seeing, um, and so we get these photos from kind of you know classic era of photography. This is one man with one camera and one moment, one idea. This is the perfect image. Um, but to combine this and try and rationalize it with where we are today, I see us living in a world where photography now has to embrace many cameras and many moments and many people. And so, you know, maybe an image like this that is a self-portrait made of, you know, many different uh, individual photos combined, maybe this is more where we're going. This is a, a photograph that, that tells a lot as well. 
and it embraces all these ideas about、um, this kind of new photography. So I'm, I've been starting to collect these different ways in which、um, images can be combined, and we can start to make more out of this this pool of photographs that we're faced with.、Um, and I've As I said, I, I'm starting to think of this as something called photoviz.、Um, you can see this kind of world of motion and photographs、um, in terms of their running time and the time that they represent. And so things like slow motion and video and hyperlapse video all occupy this this plane. And photoviz can represent almost infinite time and、uh, infinite moments, but still require only a very、um, brief amount of time to consume. So we think about dataviz, which is taking something like the database here on the left and turning it into a visualization. We can also think about、uh, photoviz in the same way, where we're taking a pool of photographs and turning them into one decisive image、um, that expresses all that.、Um, so. To look at some of these tools,、uh, ranking is one that we're encountering all the time.、Uh, if you look at, you know, say Facebook or Instagram Explore, this is the、um, idea of taking signals to reduce this pool into something that is more concise. And we can see,、um, say, newspapers starting to embrace this. Rather than having to have their photographer at the moment when it happens, you can simply look at the pool of photos taken in the world and basically. Turn some guy with an iPhone into your stringer,、um, as exemplified by this plane crash that happened in San Francisco, where you know the the,、uh, the AP just picked up these photos and said, "These are the ones we're going to run with."、Um, you can think of motion as well. This is connecting one photo to its neighbors. So、um, let's see,、uh, is this playing? There we go. So, you know, this, is a, this is a photo combined with a little bit of motion.、Um, I think it's called a cinemagram. This technique. So this is this very like hypnotic, repetitive、um, GIF that that pulls you in and and makes you linger on it,、um, and is tying part of the photo to its neighbors and creating this motion.、Um, long exposure is another way of combining all these moments into something that's greater than the sum of its parts.、Um, funnily enough, this is kind of The、uh, the bug in early photography. So if we look at this photograph by Daguerre,、um, it took about 11 minutes to make a photograph back then. And what we get is、um, the first photograph of a human. You can see this guy over here who was having his shoe shined and stood still long enough to be captured in the scene. But it tells us something about these 11 minutes, right? That everybody else was moving too fast, and this one person、um, was stationary. Um, when you combine lights with、uh, long exposure photography, you get these really interesting stories, like、um, this one of the, the flight path of a helicopter.、Um, expanding that into looking at、um, airlines and their、um, their path,、um, you get these long exposures,、um, and you can zoom back even further. This is no longer a photograph, but this is a data visualization now、um, by Aaron Koblen, looking at flight paths over the United States.、Um, So you can see how the the distinction between data visualization and photography is becomes、um, just becomes a little bit theoretical.、Um, these images are are very close and kind of have the same intentions to them, but they're they're made in entirely different ways. One is made with、uh, photons, and the other one is made with data.、Um, and this is one of my favorite images. This is what happens when you put LEDs on a bunch of Roomba autonomous vacuums and turn off the lights.、Um, you know, you could. You could tackle this problem by saying, "Oh, I'm going to, you know, track and get the data of where the Roomba goes," or you can just turn off the lights and take a long exposure photograph and figure it out this way.、Um, another example of using photography to get at these really complicated data stories、um, is this project, which I love, where you take a、uh, a pole covered in LEDs and attach it to a Wi-Fi signal strength detector, and then you just take a long exposure photograph and walk it along the street, and it creates this bar. Um, in real space, that shows the strength of Wi-Fi signals.、Um, multiple exposure is another technique for combining these moments. This is a look at、um, at flights leaving LAX.、Um, so someone has, you know, just taken a photo of a day's worth of of planes and comped them all together. Um, it can be really useful for sports.、Um, in a lot of Olympic coverage recently, we've seen this technique.、Um, this is using a strobe, but there are now photographic techniques that allow you to very easily combine、um, a quick series of photographs into one image.、Um, and then for art, I love、um, this series by a photographer. 
in New York City who simply just took many, many, many photographs and then organizes them by his own sort of um, editing. So you can see which this one is, but there's like people carrying balloons or all the people in uniform. Um, and it's even been productized. So uh, Google Auto Awesome is um, a feature you might have experienced in their products where you can take two photos and it combines um, the best parts of each one into this photo where both the people are smiling. Um, or we've gotten used to this kind of view of our Earth, but it's actually a very sophisticated process of taking all the areas of Earth without clouds and combining them to create a cloudless view of, um, of the Earth. Collage and mosaic is another way of bringing together all these, these moments. This is um, a look out of someone's backyard over the course of the year, which for me tells me much, much more about this place than a single photograph could have. Or um, Nerhal, this photographer who takes video of people trying to sit still and then kind of carves away through these layers of photographs to show how um, we're actually moving and breathing and, and living. Or looking through time. Um, this technique is one that I'm sure many of you have seen, where you're combining an old photo of a place with a new photo, um, this being a, a high school in Detroit. Um, or David Hockney's photos, where we may be combining many faces into one, um, but our brains are, are capable of combining these back into one scene that's combining many moments into to one image. Uh, and Photosynth, an old project by Microsoft, which um, you kind of have to, to see the video to experience this, but this will take you know, a thousand photos, combine them, figure out the angles, and allow you to move around in space as it reconstitutes things like uh, the Sphinx, as seen here. Um, metadata is now uh, a piece of our photography that we take for granted. Um, I've done some work trying to use this to tell larger stories of photography. Um, this is what happens when you take all the timestamps of photos over the course of the year and start to aggregate them. And you can see the important moments in, in my year there or looking at them based on geography. So um, how does this describe the places that are interesting to me? But if you expand this and start to look at a whole community instead, you can again get... Um, See the way that data visualization and photography start to combine as each of these tweets is geocoded and turns into a pixel that starts to describe New York City without any underlying map. Um, finally, content extraction. This is kind of the, the newest threshold of these technologies, and this is allowing computers to understand the images that we're taking so that we can tell these stories or make connections between photographs. Something I've done manually, like counting the animals or cats in my photos to be able to, to tell these categorical stories about them. But now we have APIs where we can stick a photo into a web service and it will tell us that you know this boring photo is filled with a keyboard and a computer and work and a laptop. So computers starting to understand our environments much, much better. And it's happening at an incredible rate. So this photo, um, as parsed by Google, you know, is starting to describe, you know, a sombrero and a dog. But about three months later, it's moved on to being able to create captions that describe these photos um, with varying levels of accuracy, but it's moving faster and faster and faster. So where I see us now is we're in a world where um, these photos are just infused with data. And this is either the data that we put into it or, you know, their neighbors or data that we can extract from it. And this whole process of trying to tell more about um, the photographic stories we're capturing involves trying to connect photographs. Um, this is something that I do in data visualization, and it's what we're trying to do um, in this world, is create these connections between different objects. That might be you know, from the angle that the photograph is taken, um, the content contained within the photograph, uh, time and location, and even popularity. So what are the likes or um, what are the comments being made about these photographs? And these techniques are allowing us to do um, new things that help us tackle this glut of photography. So they can help us express more in a shorter time um, and allow us to um, search better and find the images that we're after. Um, and finally, I'll give you this image that, again, is another one of my favorite examples. So, you know, what if you could compress an entire fireworks show into a single image? Um, you know, I think, I think it's a great image. So thank you very much.